Uh, this is Alan Jaramillo, and this is my project, uh, Vector.CPP. Uh, before I started working on this project, this is where I pasted the uh, vector code that Mr. Merle gave us so I could see how it worked. As you can see, I've, I forgot to take out this part of the vector code. Well, I ended up, I ended up using, making this project without actually using any vectors. I still have to include same for the vectors, even though I don't use them. I use mostly structs. So what I did was, this is like the most important part of the code, uh, struct entity. This creates uh, all the objects, like the player, the, the things that try to get the player, as well as the thing that stops other things from getting the player. Uh, what is it exactly that you're doing with this code? It's pretty much just like allows, uh, allows, allows the user or the program to move an X upon a coordinate plane. Mm -hmm. And uh, some other characters are trying to get to the X. But there's a third character which has the shape of a snake that tries to stop those characters from touching it. Okay, so it's it's a modified version of Windows Snake game. Not a not at all if you actually think about it, but it's like it was going to be that, but then I decided not to do that. Okay, so you basically went in a completely different direction. Yeah. Okay. As good. you can see, uh, ironically, Snake. Entity, okay, the entity of the player is represented by an X, entity snake is represented by numbers. Ironically, entity snake looks nothing like a snake. And there's entity missile, which tries to stop the entity snakes. Okay. Entity missile actually looks like a snake. Okay. And of course, all of those are structs. Yeah, they're all, there are structs of the type entity, which, and what entity includes is that it includes the X coordinate, the Y coordinate, and, uh, I have I have a Z coordinate but it doesn't use one. The CXP and CYP are for determining the path of the AI. This is this is how like all the snake entities decide how to get closer to the player. So using a formula say that the origin say that the player if their Y coordinate is lower than the player's they will increase their Y coordinate, and if their X coordinate is lower than the players, they will increase their X coordinate. Therefore, by doing that, they their coordinates become closer to that of the player. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's on a, it's on a four it's on a four loop, so I didn't have to do it with all the other. There's like I believe three, yes, three uh, three of the snake AI, and there's one missile and one player. Go up to that four statement in AI. Yeah. Okay, why it says P equals zero, P not equal to four, P plus plus. Why did you choose those specific um, limits when you did the four loop? Uh, P is not equal to four? Right. Uh, because if I made it so that I, had, I could have done it that P, when P is equal to three, it, I could have made it soft when, uh, wait, actually, give me a second. P is not equal to four. As long as P is not equal to four, we have a comment yeah. here. We have a question. Yeah. Uh, well, isn't, it, isn't it because snakes, the snake array, is only three long? Zero, one, two. Three. Yeah, there's actually yeah, there's four. There's zero, one, two, and three. I don't believe three is actually in use. The reason I did four is just because so that would stop. So it would stop at four. Before I used to do as long as until P is greater than three. Okay. But and did you get an index out of bounds exception error? I don't think so, but I think this. I think I got some sort of an error because I eventually changed it to this. Usually, I do greater than that because if some if somehow something goes wrong in the computer and it just and it misses, uh, it say it misses four for some reason, it goes to five. It'll still stop, but in this case, uh, it didn't seem necessary. Okay. So good observation. Okay, missile missile AI. Uh, yeah. This way, I usually, before, this didn't, this is, uh, this entire section is for determining which snake the missile should target at the time. Before I used to, I was using distance formula. Right. But uh, it didn't work until I realized why. It was because uh, the squaring something in C++ is not just, uh, say, um, this thing and then just two. That's not squaring. Right. That that's yeah. not syntactically correct yeah. as you. So by the time I, by the time I figured that out, I already I already converted the this check and this into integers, I believe. How, how do, by the way, folks? How do you square something using C plus plus notation? 
You can multiply, multiply, multiply by, by itself. itself. Multiply by itself. Yeah. Multiply by itself. You know, it. there is a pile function, and the pile function will not only let you square something, it'll let you raise it to a fractional power. But if you're doing something as simple as squaring, just multiply that object by itself. Make sure, though, that the data type that's going to store the result can store the, the, the product. Sometimes yeah, but square will, a square will squaring something will always give you an integer. Well, if you square two yeah. integers, you'll always get an integer, right? Yeah, the only the only problem is if you if you have something, for example, that's a short, and it goes beyond a certain number, then you'll still get an error, and you're thinking, okay, well maybe it's a data type. No, it's because the short will only accommodate up to a certain a uh, 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 maximum integer. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so what I did was instead of using distance formula, I just did I just essentially did distance formula, except without the square root because I didn't feel like making this check a double. Okay. All right. So after that, it uses essentially uh, the missile. Missile has like a five. There are five missiles, but the only real act, the only missile that actually has to think per se is missile zero, because this is like the head of the missile snake. All of the other ones just change their all the other ones just change the coordinates to the previous coordinate of the missile before that. Okay. So, oh, so that's the real snake. Yeah, it's kind of like it's a snake. I just decided to make it look like a snake because it would be good, too confusing if I had three of them instead of just one that just killed the other ones. So it uses the same it uses essentially the same uh, the same mo way to move as the other AI. Except that its targeting system is different. The other AI are always targeting the player, while this has to target different AI based on how close they are to the actual player. Oh, I I noticed that you used the continue. Uh, what effect does that have in your code? Oh, it uh, goes to it goes back to the beginning of the loop. Because uh, the target should only change if one if the distance of one thing is lower than the distance of another thing. So if okay. it's not, then there's no point. Okay. Continuing the loop would be detrimental. So you and of course, what if you want to get out of the loop, what would you use instead? Break. Break. Yeah. Any oh, other besides continuing break? Go to. No, we don't Maybe need stop. Uh, go to. Uh, I is frowned upon for what reason? Uh, takes up a long memory. What? There, uh, object oriented programming. Yeah. The I idea is to do things in yes. methods as opposed to um, do things line after line after line by like Pascal, right? Okay, go ahead. Alan. Okay. Uh, so this is what detects uh, the detects when either the this is what detects when the missile actually touches the enemy. There is no detection for when the enemy touches the player at this point. There used to be, but they just took it out because it wasn't necessary at the time. So it just checks the coordinate of the missile and compares it to the coordinates of the enemy, and then, and then once the coordinates are the same, it just sets the enemy coordinates to somewhere else, like a specific starting point. It's all different. Okay, clean slate. Though after, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to draw first because that's more important. This is what creates the grid. Uh, I decided that instead of just doing a bunch of C out statements in to like shape it into like a sort of grid, I would just I would just do four loops that I would see out what belongs in each coordinate. Oh good. Yeah. Good. A, a very sophisticated way and a very efficient way of doing something that at the beginning of the year we were doing with C out statements, right? Yeah. Very good, Alan. Very good. Yeah. How many lines of code did Alan save himself? By doing this instead of C out, hundreds and hundreds of lines. You think also, about it, every single cell of this grid, and you don't know how big this grid is, right? You could have, for example, in Java, um, the, the case study that we do um, is a bounded grid that could be m by n, where m and n are, you know, are ten, uh, two digit integers. So why waste time with print out, you know, print statements that are going to generate all of these, um, you know, vertical lines and horizontal lines, and then 
figure out where everything is and all that when you can you can do everything very nicely in, in loops, right? Yeah. Okay. The the this works very well because there's no like complex things like and the, I tried to do the great thing with tic tac toe, but the thing was that you just got like a ton of X's inside each box and right. and making like one big X or one big O. That, that turned out to uh, take too too long because you actually have to like shape it and determine the thing. Okay. Here there is no large structures like that. There's no large uh, structures that have to be built every time, so it works well. This uh, space here, that just makes it so that the grid is wider, so it's not so compact. I could I could remove that. I probably will. Yes, to show. Also, this is a reverse loop. The loop goes backwards instead of uh, the way it usually goes forwards. Yeah, y minus minus, right? Yeah, the reason I did that was because at first I just had a normal loop that I just went up until it was like uh, 21 or 20. The thing with that is that if I did it like that, then y, the y coordinates would be backwards. Oh. I have to see them out. Yeah, so. Interesting. You yeah. want the y coordinates to be yeah. in ascending order from top to bottom. Yeah. So you do a loop that goes backwards. Yeah, because the console can only the console can only go down. It doesn't like go back up. Right, and that that's yeah. the nature of how grids are constructed um, in C plus plus, right? Okay. Okay. So this uh, none of the none of the none of like the characters on the grid, none of the none of the players nor the the bots nor the missile, none of those are saved onto the actual grid. They because they have they're all represented by structs. They all have their coordinates saved with them. So I can just at every time I always clear the grid. I clear the grid at every time. So okay. yeah. So I don't I don't have to worry about I don't have to worry about their coordinates getting lost or anything. So what I do well, is it's it's similar yeah. it's similar in the idea not in code but the idea is similar to when. Uh, you know, you turn off your computer whenever you want to get rid of some programs that are resident in RAM that you feel are somehow slowing you down or slowing the computer down or, or just maybe the information that you have saved on those programs might be interfering with what you want to do. So just clear the, uh, clear the RAM. And since that memory is electrostatic, just restarting it yeah. will clear it. Because, because I'm just like clearing the thing, like every time the grid is drawn, the, everything is cleared out and then it's just drawn again like uh, one at a time. The reason I did this is because that way I don't have to worry about like erasing characters when, uh, when the character moves. Right. Because it's, it just, it's just like created an, well I just created a new one instead of having and to erase everything, and everything. Everything is happening instantaneously so you, it yeah. looks like Things are disappearing faster than the blink of an eye. Anyway, yeah. so once draw is complete, it goes to a clean slate. This is just this is like replaces every space on the grid with a blank space. That's how it clears it. And afterwards, I believe it goes to position. No, but I don't know. I don't remember exactly where it goes to position. But what position does is that it. Uh, what was it? Did you get? Oh yeah, the, it reserved. It took the it took the x and y coordinates of every. O it takes the x and y coordinates of every object, and uh, it puts the object on the grid in a certain order. So the reason I put the reason I put uh, O last is because so that if it's if two things are on the same space on the grid, O will be the one that's drawn because it's the last to come in the sequence. Um, Let's see. This is just a turn. I guess get ch because it doesn't require enter, so it's a lot less of a hassle. Only problem is, so uh, the game is played with a numpad. It chooses the numpad arrow keys, the same kind of the same one as the tic tac toe. Only thing is, for some reason, I'm having issues with one on the numpad because it's having the effect where it just ends the program or just glitches it at times. Interesting. Yeah. So I'm not gonna be using the one. Or any of like the diagonal ones. This is where it clears the screen after the player make after the player decides where to move. It clears the screen and it just runs all the uh, missile AI is run four times so that the missile moves faster than everything else. 
and it does position and it drills. Could I put that in a loop? Not r not really because in between the actual missile AIs, it has to, it has to run collision after missile. Like, I guess I could have done it. And then I bet in a yeah, I in loop? Yeah, I could have done it in a loop probably. Just put both collision and missile each time. So I'm going to run the program. Okay. Starts out blank. See so the X. The X uh, is the player character, the line of controlling. The missile is the O. It's followed by a trail of asterisks. See, so I could see the path better. And, and the zero, snakes are the one and two. Yeah, zero, one, and two are the snakes. So yeah, I don't have to overwrite every because the uh, gets cleared every time. I don't have to overwrite each uh, space. So it's like a lot easier to handle movement and collision and stuff. Right. It's all done by coordinates. So yeah. So the missiles are killing the snakes that are trying to get to the X. Yeah. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, so I think. So now if you get in the way of the missile, nothing happens. I haven't made any, uh, no, I don't have any collision set up between the missile and the thing. The, everything just phases through each other except the missile and, and the snakes. But what does happen when it collides? Just when what collides? The missile and the player? Yeah. The, nothing happens when the missile collides with the player. Nothing happens. The only collisions that matter are the missile and the snakes because I haven't put anything else. You haven't put anything with the snakes and the player or anything? I used to have something, I used to have something, but I just took it out. Just screw you. <laughs> Looks like those the missile can move faster than the snake. Yeah, it's because uh, the missile AIs run four times, while the snake AIs only run once. It moves four it's times. It's an unfair advantage, but yeah, it's good. Yeah, but there's three of them, so. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but in real life, the missiles move faster than the snake's end. I don't know. It could be those ones that sit across water really fast. <laughs> All right. Okay, very okay. good, Alan.